special that you thought about using mobile devices or in particular mobile phones uh, for learning. Uh, this is uh, this slide shows um, the growth of um, fixed line. Well, not to say the growth, it is the uh, fixed line going down, but the cellular phones are going up uh, in terms of per 100 household. Uh, uh, going straight into the project, uh, the mobile learning at OM, in 2008, we did a readiness survey primarily to find out whether our learners would be ready for it. Um, I usually like to do this um, uh, personally, uh, just to know whether uh, we can confirm that, yes, uh, that we all have phones, and we also wanted to know which um, which mobile subscribers are they with? Uh, which mo which mobile uh, subscription companies are they with? And um, uh, we got we got almost three thousand students uh, responding to the survey, and with that uh, it, can, it it gave us a very definite plan on on um, on the fact that mobile learning will be will reach out to the students. Uh, percent have phones. In 2009, we started with podcasting in the January semester. Uh, they were like um, one minute, uh, but somehow it was not that popular uh, because the students uh, they had to pay when they downloaded the podcast. Uh, so after one semester, we uh, we also realized that it was uh, labor intensive and time intensive. Uh, Process to to record uh, the um, segments. So we went. Uh, we considered the SMS. We had a we had a workshop in April. Uh, about twenty something people. We had about four or five students, about uh, six or seven tutors, and the rest were academics, full time academics from OUM. We discussed and uh, we suggested, you know, what what if we were to launch an SMS. Um, mode of uh, mobile learning. Students were not too happy because they, I guess maybe they didn't know what it was going to be like, but somehow um, we piloted it in May and um, we did this. We started with a matrix. Uh, we thought there would be a good reason for sending out certain SMSs at certain times and uh, it must be the right SMS at that particular moment for the student. We also asked them um, when would you like to receive the SMSs? And they said, well, not during the daytime because that's when they work. And uh, if we wanted to send the SMS, it had to be like uh, after 8 p.m. and not too late, not not uh, after 8, not after 10 p.m. So we sent the SMS about 8 p.m. And because we had uh, maybe up to 2,000 students send the SMS too, we queued it from 7:30 uh, onwards, and then I think within half an hour. It was all right. In September, uh, based on the uh, success uh, of the pilot in May, we launched the mobile learning in three courses. Uh, if I remember correctly, this involved a business course, a genetics, bachelor, uh, a biology course, and uh, the learning skills course. And uh, we expanded to eight courses um, next semester. And then we brought it down to three. Uh, when we felt that the numbers were getting so huge. And in May, usually, we have lesser courses. So we brought it down to three. In September, it was just one course. Um, um, for some reason, I can't remember why now. Uh, then in January, we took it in one, two courses, and two courses. And in September, coming up, it also two courses. The two courses uh, here have been... Um, uh, limited to the learning skills course, which is the first semester course for all OEM students uh, enrolled for the first time, and uh, another course, another course is called the Malaysian, which uh, uh, is totally online plus mobile, uh, plus the um, uh, self-managed learning, which is uh, the module. So far, about 22 students have benefited uh, since we launched the. Uh, Mobile learning using SMS uh, in in uh, May 2009, and uh, let me see. Ah, if I can go back a little bit, when we when we did the readiness survey, uh, 
uh, we found that 98.9% of the students' phones. And we had also asked uh, what kind of phones uh, they had, because at that time we were considering podcasts. Uh, not too many had um, um, expensive phones yet at that time. I think maybe about 20 or 30%. Um, but nevertheless, uh, we tried that. Uh, when we asked students uh, whether they could imagine themselves as, as uh, being a mobile learner, we provided this uh, visual. And we asked this question as uh, exactly as what you see here, but with also a translation in the local language, so it's a bilingual questionnaire. And um, uh, 80, 80.8, I think, uh, said that yes, they would be ready for mobile learning uh, within states. Okay, so this were the uh, this was the uh, exact uh, response. 80% yes, 80% said no. The objectives of mobile learning at OUM was basically to enhance the, the current blend of learning modes uh, used at OUM, as well as to increase the flexibility of learning and to encourage support uh, ubiquitous learning, seeing that uh, mobile devices are getting um, uh, popular and uh, people were going into smartphones. Uh, so we thought we should start um, uh, mobile learning uh, at time. Uh, in enhancing the blend, what we did was taking the existing uh, delivery mode, we added to it. It's not that we took something away and we mobile learning. Uh, it was more to make everything work better. Because increasing the flexibility of learning, uh, it was more of yes, there's another mode uh, for them uh, to get um, uh, instructions from. It's like having another tutor. Uh, instead of just having the face to face tutor telling them what to do, motivating them, uh, maybe reminding them on what's important, we also had the uh, SMS giving them the same messages. And uh, of course, um, uh, we thought uh, once we we got this started, we could go into other ways of uh, uh, learning uh, mobile devices. Um, I'll I'll be saying something later about the iPad. Uh, go on to the next slide. Uh, SMS was considered uh, because SMS uh, was and still now a very big uh, thing. Uh, everybody sending SMS. For example, I hardly uh, make calls or pick up calls. Uh, most of the time, it's, it's uh, sending of SMSs. Uh, and um, it's, uh, it's cheap. Uh, and, uh, on a personal level, I think it was, it's only, um, I think, 1.5 cents, US cents or Canadian. So it's very cheap. Uh, but for OUM, um, we have to pay 20 cents for um, SMS. We have for students. Uh, so individually, uh, it's very cheap, and that's why SMS is very big. All right, this is the uh, blended learning I was uh, mentioning earlier. We have the face-to-face -face tutorials, which students five times uh, five times in the semester. We also have the online learning uh, opportunities as well as 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 well as resources. Uh, typically, they have forums that they can participate in. And also, they have, um, in addition to print modules, which every student gets for every course, we also have web -based modules, uh, which is which are available through the uh, learning system. We also started creating audio modules when we had uh, when we started having blind students or visually impaired students, and um, for some courses, we had multimedia courseware created. Um, at the very least, uh, learning objects uh, based on uh, uh, using reactivity. And uh, in addition, there are some podcasts which uh, were recorded. Uh, this is uh, uh, part of the uh, iRadio project. Uh, in addition, sometimes the PDF documents, uh, which were uploaded to the uh, learning management system or PowerPoint, Microsoft Word, and so on, and also the digital library, which will be the uh, uh, 
uh, database of journals, uh, e-books, e and so on. Uh, we, o we expect uh, students to be able to do their own self-managed learning um, and of course uh, they can use the resources which were provided to them, print, the print uh, module as well as the, the uh, resources provided uh, in the LMS. Uh, but in addition to all this, for the courses which, which we selected for mobile learning, we sent M SMSs um, in terms of, well, in, in, in uh, th uh, five categories. It could be related to content of the module. It could, um, uh, well, at the st well, we have to manage um, the course. For example, sending them a hello message at the very beginning, and at the end, of course, we will say a uh, uh, good semester, something like that. Somewhere in the middle, we send uh, uh, motivational SMSs. Uh, we also remind them when appropriate to go into the forums and we sometimes say okay what the forum is all about coming up we provide tips uh, at times on how to remember certain content for example okay next um, we have this uh, push and pull notion of mobile learning uh, using sms the sms we consider to be uh, to students, okay, the five categories. At the same time, uh, when you see the uh, uh, the three circles, the self-managed learning use of modules, which which were a re which is a repeat of what I mentioned earlier, um, the students will be will be um, as will be to yes, go into the module, you know, read the module, and uh, same thing, uh, sometimes we say, read this topic before you go into the tutorial, or please remember to read the topics before you go into the tutorials. Uh, the reason we had to do that was because tutors were always telling us students come unprepared uh, to the tutorials, and uh, we thought uh, using an SMS uh, to tell them or to remind them to read uh, would help. And yes, uh, there was an improvement in terms of that. Uh, in terms of forums, yes, we also uh, reminded them, yes, we have this forum coming up, please go in and discuss. And it works very well for the first semester students because we wanted them to, to, to start adopting um, the approach that a business learner need to adopt um, or need to use yeah, to, to, to manage their own learning. Uh, for example, this this are examples of the uh, content or or the uh, sorry, the, the 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 five categories given. Well, these are the examples given. This was the purpose for each category, and I think uh, you can do that um, on your own time. Okay, but this was the metrics that I mentioned earlier. We sent uh, mostly content, so in this case. Uh, 15 SMSs for related content uh, about forums, uh, well, four about uh, on forums, forum tips, and two related to motivation, usually in the form of a motivation quote. Uh, interestingly, uh, when, we got, uh, when we met students, they told us this was a bit difficult for them to understand. So the semesters after that, we gave a simpler quote. And we also provided uh, reminders um, uh, in terms of course management, uh, uh, we reminded them their mid-semester exam was. Of course, some of them were saying, uh, why don't you tell us the location as well? And this was impossible because they would be taking exams in at least 40 different centers. Okay, we did. Uh, every semester, we get feedback uh, from the students. We question us out to all the learning centers and and um, we encourage them the feedback. And in May and some in May and September, uh two years when we asked them whether they were encouraged to be focused in the studies, you can see that it's like seventy five and above percent uh were uh, whether it's
could help learners manage their learning better is quite high as well. And same thing with sustaining their interest uh, in the course and giving flexibility to the learning. So it's pretty high. In terms of learner satisfaction on a scale of 1 to 10, um, students think that it helped them to prepare better for tutorials. And uh, this is what they said, it enabled them to learn any time and enabled them to learn anywhere because their handphones would be with them all the time. Um, sometimes they refer to the messages and it could be related to a snippet uh, of a content. So that helps them both. And um, they felt encouraged to stay more focused in the studies because if you can imagine the face-to-face -face classes as being two weeks apart, so in between, sometimes they forget that they are students because they are, they are mostly um, working. 95% uh, of the students are in full-time employment, and they did say that the SMS was received reminded them that they were students, especially in the first semester. And they also said that they had um, the interest sustained in the course and helped uh, SMS them manage their learning better and also help them make learning more enjoyable, maybe because the feeling of connectedness um, with the university and with the course. Um, jumping to the most recent uh, survey, May, May 2011, um, um, in, in terms of whether the SMS were good, yes, uh, they said very good, we must continue. Uh, please note that this was taken verbatim from the students. It was not edited for the learner. And uh, another person said, good, at least know the current news of the subject. And that's very good. Uh, should SMS for other uh, They felt motivated. And these were the comments uh, given. I think I will just leave to you to read them. Okay, they also said SMSs were useful. Next, SMSs were also helpful, help them to remember the course content better and give them a lot of information, very helpful, reminds them when to do the assignment and exercise, and then uh, uh, it motivated them to study, and the reminders uh, sent, well, they gave them a new alert, and, and, and so on. Okay, if we, think, if we think in terms of the future, let's say not not too far away, let's say in the next two to three years, um, I think um, for now, with the SMSs uh, being sent to students, it's like having a tutor in the pocket. If we can imagine the tutor uh, teach them, um, they are also acting like a manager, uh, managing the students' uh, learning. Uh, telling them, uh, reminding them about deadlines, reminding them perhaps about what's important, uh, maybe how best to study, how best to understand a certain topic, and so on. Uh, the teacher also guides them from time to time, so the SMSs uh, do that sort of. And uh, we also uh, send an SMSs which uh, motivate the learner in terms of the quotations. And uh, one student I clearly remember said that uh, at one point he came out of the examination hall and he felt uh, not too good because he, he didn't think uh, uh, he answered uh, too well. Uh, but within minutes, an SMS came in and then he, he felt um, uh, uplifted again you know, in terms of spirit. So that was good. And uh, in the future, um, currently OUM is also considering use of uh, tablet um, devices like the iPad. Um, I did mention to the senior vice president about um, one and a half years ago, a few months after the iPad came out, 
and I told her how about giving the students the iPad, and instead of instead of OUM giving student the print module, why not have each student download the module in electronic copy, and then um, maybe with a certain software, um, they would be able to annotate uh, to to highlight things in the module and so on. So that might change things, um, and. Um, uh, what you call this? Um, I was just reading this meeting chat, so I got distracted. Sorry. And um, uh, uh, with the iPad, uh, it would replace the cost of um, printing the modules and getting the modules to all over the country. And so much uh, there's there's so much um, logistics involved uh, with a, with, with uh, about 800 courses I think offered every semester. There's 800 different titles uh, to 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 work with, to print, and to send out. Uh, with the iPad, everybody gets an iPad maybe at the beginning, and after that, um, uh, they will just download the modules. Okay, I think uh, some people were. Uh, I missed some of the chats, but um, uh, some people are saying, yeah, you know, it's like having the, it's like holding hands, holding the learner's hands. Uh, but so saying um, with distance learners, yeah, you might have to. Uh, think that this is the first semester course, and we just needed to get them um, uh, adopting uh, certain habits as a as a distance learner. We we are thinking that hopefully this this will reduce the uh, attrition rates. Of course, we don't know. Uh, we haven't really done a comparison between after more learning in terms of uh, dropout rates after the first semester uh, and uh, comparing with um, uh, dropout rates before that mobile learning um, and um, uh, but that would be interesting uh, to compare. Um, the iPads I think uh, eventually we will be ubiquitous learning. I remember Kurt Bonk uh, saying in his uh, the world is open, uh, you learning is, is on, on the corner and I think uh, if OUM adopts the uh, tablet devices, uh, the decision is not there yet. But I think if the, if if OUM adopts it, then um, we could be doing more things with it. Okay, in conclusion, um, when we uh, after after all this, uh, we think um, uh, it was very important to define the purpose of mobile learning. It, it, we have to limit it a few good reasons, uh, not mobile learning. Uh, for everything. Um, I think I gave uh, the three objectives. Uh, we think it's also important to see whether they were ready and uh, uh, primarily whether they had a device, whether they, uh, whether they were willing to try and set, whether they were, um, if we wanted to charge them, whether they would be willing to be charged and so on. And uh, at the same time, we needed to get, at that time, what we did was I involved a lot of, as many faculty members as possible. And to start the project, I communicated with the tutors of those courses and all the directors of the learning centers and um, some of the administrators uh, to tell them that this, what this project was all about. And we also sent them uh, the exact SMS that students get so they know what was going on. And uh, the other thing was, um, for any project, um, especially uh, we had to actually and it actually produced the learning in terms of the learning outcomes. And if if we don't do that, then I think we didn't do anything. And of course, uh, planning to succeed, uh, making sure the resources are there financially, uh, people, uh, time, um, everything else. And uh, once the project is implemented, uh, we need to monitor. Um, what we did was um, uh, we stayed in touch with some, especially at the very beginning, with the tutors, with the uh, learning center directors. Uh, just to find out how the students felt about it. Some of us went out to the learning center. We spread ourselves out and visited a few, and we met the students. And uh, everywhere we went at that time, the students were very happy. They said, yeah, it's very nice uh, to receive all these services. 
and uh, they wish uh, it could continue um, um, in, in, in other courses. Uh, we also made sure that we evaluated um, every semester just to get the feedback, to make sure that we're on track, and to make sure that we're not wasting money, we're not wasting energy time, and we're not um, disturbing the students' uh, peace of mind. Yeah? And of course, uh, always trying to improve. At the moment, uh, we don't we are feeling any any different uh, from the first time we started, uh, because everyone is happy the way it is. The only thing is, I'm sure we need to consider other devices after this. But uh, in terms of the objectives, the the SMSs I think had worked quite well. Okay, I think uh, that's about it. Uh, thank you. I hope. Um, um, this gave a very quick view of the project OUM. Uh, the articles um, uh, that I gave, uh, the three links, uh, would have uh, given more explanation, uh, more detail. Okay, thank you very much. Well, thank you, Zoriani. And, uh, okay, well, thank you. Uh, and am I getting echo here? Uh, well, maybe not. Okay. Uh, see, uh, first of all, if uh, anyone has questions or comments to add, we still got a little bit of time here. It's uh, only 2:03 by my clock, so I think we can go a wee bit over time, given when we started. So, uh, although we uh, have to keep in mind that in uh, Kuala Lumpur it's 1 a.m., so we don't want to go too long. So, does anyone have any uh, questions? I saw a couple in the chat room. Somebody want to speak up and uh, pose those questions? And not seeing anyone jumping to the microphone. Uh, I did see one comment in the chat area uh, asking about tying this to learning outcomes. Uh, so I wonder if you could comment on that. And also I'm seeing a question from Jenny uh, McNess asking if there's been any negative feedback from students and if so, what that feedback would have been. And, and Brett uh, Fifield is saying the link to learning outcomes. You're looking for the link specifically to learning outcomes. Go ahead. And we seem to have lost sound from Zoriani. Yeah, it's still here. Okay. Uh, did, you, did you hear the questions that I asked? And no, would no, you like to not. offer an answer? Oh, you didn't. Can you can hear me now, though, right? I can hear you, yes. Okay. One of the questions was, was there any negative feedback? And if so, what was it? And the other question was uh, whether you could tie this directly to learning outcomes if there's any direct click uh, any direct link there okay negative feedback um, yes um, there were a few uh, some of them um, said because we we gave them a choice uh, midway in the semester we asked them whether they still like to continue or they want to uh, not receive the SMSs anymore um, we do get about 10 students uh, not wanting it anymore. Uh, 10 out of 1,000 plus students is just negligible. Uh, but eventually we realized that they were on the verge of uh, dropping out. So, um, so it's it's not it's not that bad actually. When they when they wanted out, it it, it was like mm -hmm. they were going to get out of the program as well. Um, 
in terms of um, achieving the learning outcomes, uh, we didn't tie it uh, very tightly uh, to academic learning outcomes. It was more of um, uh, helping them to become distance learning students. The module that we chose uh, was titled, uh, what was it now? Learning skills. Learning skills for open and distance learners. And in that module, we taught them uh, the um, the various um, techniques or or the uh, various uh, ICT um, well, some of the uh, what you call this um, um, uh, skills in in using LMS how to log in how to change the password uh, um, the fact that they needed to go to the forums that that they needed to be contributing to the forums and. Uh, Typically, they would wait for the teacher to tell them everything and they would go back and revise. But this is the reverse. You wanted them to read first before going to the tutorials. So we felt that we needed to, to help them become a distance learner. So that was the main intention rather than <coughs> help them achieve the um, um, academic outcomes or the outcomes of every topic. As you saw, there were about 50% um, related to content, which was trying to get them to understand, for example, their learning style, trying to get them uh, to understand how to read better. I think there was the SQR technique in the module and so on. Um, well, uh, is that enough in terms of uh, reply, response? I think so. There's a, another question came up asking uh, whether teachers or tutors are allowed to SMS individual students or would they use other communications? Yes. Um, each tutor had a limit of 25 students uh, and we limited each tutor to having only two groups of students. So at most they will have 50 students. If they wanted to send an SMS, they can. Uh, but uh, what we did through the remote learning project was to have uh, one person uh, at headquarters send the SMS all at the same time. Uh, but uh, in between, if the tutors wanted to do that, they could. And was the SMS communication bi-directional? Could the students send uh, SMSs as well? Uh, for, a few, for the first few semesters, it was unidirectional. We pushed it only. But uh, uh, starting, uh, I think, about three semesters ago, uh, we allowed students to respond to the SMSs, uh, usually in terms of um, like a quiz question. So they would respond with an A or a B, and then we'll just confirm uh, whether they were um, right or not. So very minimal, actually. Okay, and that's all the questions I'm seeing uh, here in the uh, chat area. and. Uh, this is your chance, everyone, uh, to get one last question in. And while I'm waiting for that, I'd like to take this opportunity, Zoriani, to thank you on behalf of Dave, George, and myself. Sorry about the audio problems to start. You had the unenviable distinction, or maybe it's the enviable distinction, of being the first speaker in this Change 11 course. Uh, and... and uh, Oh, and we have one last question. Uh, do you use your LMS to send and receive SMSs? Uh, no, we did not use the uh, LMS. We used, um, uh, I'm not sure what it is, uh, but I had uh, one, one of my uh, staff. Uh, it is a server. Um, it was uh, provided by the uh what you call this the mobile company and uh, we were uh we were subscribed to their services and uh we put the numbers we would enter the messages we would enter what time the sms was supposed to go out and um that's what happened um and what was the question again uh, what what else Oh, I was just asking if they were using the LMS to send us.
channel. That's all it yeah. was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not the LMS. It is another program. And uh, I saw I, I saw a, a question about whether it's still going on. Yes, it is still going on. Yeah. But okay. I hope it will go into uh, bigger things. Uh, right now, we are limiting it to two courses um, because it's it can be expensive uh, sending it out to more than the two courses. Uh, but uh, let me let me say, uh, let me uh, thank um, everyone for having uh, joined in. Uh, I'm feeling a bit sleepy now um, <laughs> because I would have slept normally about two hours ago. But I know some people are also um, beyond their bedtime. Uh, those who have joined us, um, and uh, thank you for having me first. Uh, I didn't realize I was going to be number one, uh, but uh, I guess. Um, um, being the first is either good or not so good because being good um, good because then you don't have a benchmark uh, to follow um, not so good because sometimes you don't really know what to do but I hope uh, things have worked out well I'd say they uh, ultimately worked out uh, very well from our end thank you so much for all of your patience we really appreciate it. George and Dave, do you have anything you want to add before we wrap up? And I heard some faint sounds as though George was trying to use a substandard microphone to talk, <laughs> not being successful. Um, so when's the next session? Um, I plan on having one on Friday. Uh, I'm going to set it at 1 p.m. and hopefully we'll be able to use this uh, Fuse account uh, 1 p.m. my time, which is 12 noon Eastern. In other words, exactly the same time, uh, exactly the same time that this session started. So we'll try it on Friday. We'll try to uh, get this meeting up and running and all the kinks worked out of the system and then of course looking at uh, another session happening next week uh, unless somebody contradicts me uh, and George you might contradict me I'm not sure <laughs> uh, but we do have the session uh, tentatively scheduled for next week and uh, that would be with Martin Weller now uh, Friday Eastern 12 is uh, when I would expect that session to be. But watch the newsletter because I don't have a final confirmation of exactly when that session will take place. Anything else, uh, George, Dave, anyone else before we wrap up? And... <laughs> I'm just hearing just some noises from George, but no words. Okay, well, thank you, everyone, and uh, we'll see you on Friday. And I'm going to call in to this session. And Barry, I see you're still here. Do you want to be uh, wrapping yeah. up and saving of the recording? Because I don't know how to do that yet. I've and got it. Certainly, you've got it. Great. And I'd like to extend thanks to you for stepping in and uh, offering this solution on short notice. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. Yes, okay, thanks. Meeting recording has stopped.